This is so sketchy, right? Because I've got this drawing. It doesn't even have dimensions. <laughs> That's not the right one. You know, it's like, I keep like trying to visualize how big something is going to be and then I look at it and I'm like, that's not right. Yeah, and then this one. Okay, so I've got three different whiteboards with pictures of the house and none of them are right. Okay. This is bound to confuse me. <laughs> and it's like, the house is set up I think it's 30, I think, I think, I think, 6 times 6 is 36. This one is probably the closest at 34. So the house has got an extra two, or yeah, it's extra two feet that aren't even on the whiteboard. I think of a morning project like today, now, I'm going to make a new one. I was looking at roof pitch, that's wrong. It's like, how can I possibly get anything done like this? So, like on this one, okay. What happened was I drew the box and then I changed the numbers after. So the proportions are completely wrong. Okay, it's 12 feet across and this is supposed to be 16 feet. Like, yeah, how, you know, and yet I look at it, I'm like, okay, so it's bip, 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 but it's gonna be completely whacked, right? So that's gonna screw with my head. I think it was eight, eight and eight originally for 24 and then I added an extra 12 feet to the length of it because I felt like it was going to be too crowded okay so I just arbitrarily changed the numbers on the length but never redrew it yeah and so I'm, 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 I'm ready to start building but I'm like where's this wall gonna go you know and then in my mind again I make these decisions is like well interior walls don't matter I can I can put them wherever I want which is sort of true it would be nice if they landed on a on a truss or on a joist and they should line up with the edge of a wall and then I was kind of looking at it you know this one I kind of liked well not exactly you see exactly right exactly not exactly because I need my office up here somewhere. Breakfast table and office. No flies. Go away. You know, so this is, you know, this is wrong. Yeah, it's all wrong. <laughs> I've had two weeks to figure this out and I never freaking went back. I started doing it in light wave a little bit just to start estimating materials for the outer shell. And that's kind of where I came up with the numbers I'm working from for how many studs I was going to need. Okay. And that's as far as I got. I quit doing it. And I need a I need a house for one and three robots. I want to design it vaguely with a thought towards wheelchair accessible. So if I end up being out here the rest of my life and I you know, end up with a wheelchair or something like that because my legs are so screwed up I can't walk anymore. Okay. So I could build a ramp, you know, it, or out the back door because it's closer to the ground or, you know, something like that, right? So think about a ramp. If I make it wheelchair accessible, it's also robot accessible. That's huge, you know. <clears throat> and then I had this funny idea for the little, like for the car bot size robot. What if I had a pet door? <laughs> uh, the robot this is the robot door right except then I'd have every rabbit and freaking everything come running in through there so I'd have to figure out oh have a bluetooth activated door so when the robot got close enough the door would unlatch and then he could push out because it's a he and then that because that totally makes sense right <laughs> Uh, yeah, a special door for the robot. That's perfect. Since I've already got the posts in the ground. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to Carlin's Off Grid YouTube channel. I do things <laughs> differently. I'm a wanderer, a tinkerer, a nerd, and a U.S. Navy veteran. I have a motorcycle, a truck, and a school bus. Oh, 
And I built my house now. There might also be spaceships and stuff. I live off-grid. I'm powered by the universe. Comments are always welcome. It would be really awesome if you could subscribe. Hey! Alright, you found me. My name is Carlin and I've got a off-grid house here on a little ranch in West Texas. Thanks for joining. I'll show you around. More info is on my website. You should totally check that out. Link is in the description. Cool. On with the show already. This was... Well, this is what's on the whiteboard now before I erase it. I'm not even sure of the scale, I mean, of the position. Okay, yeah. The shop, and then this is the bus parking. Okay. So, 24 by 30, Quonset or Pole Barn. Okay. And then I drew up a shed, and now it's the shed next to the... I don't know if these are all supposed to be in the same thing, because this is how I was trying to figure out how I was going to do um, the domes. This is where the domes were going to be, not to scale. Outside workbench, shed. Possibly I was going to build the shed first because I needed something and then come back and build the shop. Okay, I don't really know. Uh, the other part, I was trying to get my head around, this was probably a year and a half ago. How was I going to, how do you actually build um, with the pole construction, how did the 2x4s or the 2x6s actually attach? I, guess I was trying to get my head around that. So I had to draw it out a few times to get it right. And I was like, this was one of the ideas, right? So I just wanted to erase that. Everything's in the way. <laughs> I can't deal with it. All right, so I'm going to clean this one and draw a house real quick. All right. <clears throat> After much mucking about, typically, right? I've managed to clear off enough of the drawing desk to get to it, and this whiteboard is just trashed. Some of this will probably still come off. But... Okay, so first off, this board is 35 and a half inches. So if we ignore the frame, that gives me about 34 inches, okay? And vertically, it's about 24 outside. So about 22. Now I need to draw something 36 inches or 36 feet by 12 feet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pretend that this is 36 inches long, and what I'll storage, I'll just make two inches too small. Okay, let's just start with that. Make up some shit. Yeah, that one works. Good deal. So I'm using a T square. This is a drywalling drywallers T square. I'm going to go to the top, basically as far as I can get the T-square when, when I'm hitting the wall. I'm just going to draw a straight line. Let's see if I can do that first. Hey, a line. Okay. I've already got flies in my face. Now, um, I'm going to assume that some of these rulers are probably about straight. This is good enough. Yeah, that's good. So I need 12 inches, so I'm going to come down 12. And if you're using a T-square, you only need one mark, because the T-square should keep you straight. Otherwise, it's broken. Alright, there's 12. Now, this is a I always forget I have this. I bought this and the and the uh, T square for drawing, not for building, right? So what I'm going to do? I figured that was 34. So I'm just going to use the triangle on top of the T square. This is how we used to do it in drafting class. Maybe we had different stuff, but same idea. So I'm going to come in. Half an inch, I think will work. Just trying to hold 
that still. Okay. And I'm just going to compress the storage room, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Because it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass to erase something right on the edge of the whiteboard. So I'm going to leave myself half an inch of white space. that. I don't need the T-square anymore right now. Let's just get rid of that. Um, fix this line. We've got little triangles we can use. Good. Alright. So I've got three different sketches of what the house was supposed to be. But they're all different sizes and scales. Alright. This one, I kind of like the layout part of it, but it was, I don't even, I didn't get dimensions on this. So I don't, I think it was 14 feet long. It was a lot smaller, right? So that's no good. This one over here was eight feet. This was eight feet wide and 24 feet long. So it was eight, 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 eight for 24 and it's not to scale, right? This one up here is the one I've been looking at the most. But what happened was, I think that might have been, well, I know I changed the dimensions, but I never changed the drawing. So currently it's labeled as 16 feet, eight feet and 10 feet, which would be 34 feet long. The house is supposed to be 36 feet long, so that's wrong anyway and 12 feet wide okay well what this used to be it was eight 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 i think like this and then i realized that was just not enough room so i just arbitrarily erased those numbers and made other numbers bigger but never redrew anything so nothing is right but i'll look at that and i'm like okay so i have a picture in my head well this is from here to here is 12 inches or 12 feet so this should be, you know, like this would be about the right scale, you know. Let me grab my bug zapper if I can get to it. I'll just try to live with it. So this was the, kind of the problem is nothing is right, and it's hard to start with that. So I'm going to grab my framing square, and I'm going to draw the house was going to be... Sixteen. In fact, I'm just going to do that with the tape, tape measure for now. So I was thinking the 16 feet for the actual house. Okay, so let's just put a 16 out here. And the shop is going to be 12. I'm going to just make that 12. So that it equals 36. Label that. All right, now get back on track here. All right. So I did a, a break line here. So this is supposed to be eight feet, but it's actually a little over five. Okay. So, so I'll just kind of live with that. Now that I've got those, I'm going to use my square, my T-square, and my triangle again. And draw those lines in place. Okay, so on this, shower, and then shelves. Okay, so let's just start with that. Bug zapper, just in case. I can just put it there, clamp it, doors are about 34 inches, so approximately 3 feet, so I'm just going to draw some doors in that are 3 feet, so it's basically a foot to an inch here. For now, let's put the door in the middle, so 
12 is 6. Shouldn't put that in my mouth. So an inch and a half, an inch and a half. I've got the worst time thinking, yeah, I'll figure it out later. It's like, no, now is later. I need to do this shit now. This will probably open outward, I think. No, I need a screen door, so it's got to open inward. Interior doors are offset this way. My, I drew this as a straight line coming all the way. Can't see that. I drew this as basically a straight line so that the bed, the dresser, the shower, the washer, dryer were all the same width. The bed is approximately 40 inches, so a little more than three feet. So I could do a line for the bed, I guess. So let's say it's a little more than three feet. Let's give it three and a half. That's pretty close. And the bed was um, a little over six feet. So I'll just say six, six and a half. Oh, yeah, I gotta have room for something else. You know, if I just label where I want things, kitchen. See, I've been looking at this, and I'm like, okay, it's actually a square. It's 12 feet by 12 feet, right? So when I draw it on for real, I got a lot more room in there than I thought I did. That's kind of cool. Because I've been picturing this as kind of like a little tiny workshop, but it's got a lot more room than I, than I imagined. Um, okay, kitchen counters are, um, like this thing, I forget if this was an actual dimension or not, but a lot of the counters that I made are two feet. This one is a little less because it was a scrap, but let's just say everything else is two feet, so I'm going to draw a two foot line here. And I'm going to do a continuous two foot line from front to back. Because right? I'm going to end up with benches and shelves and countertop from one end to the other. And then down here, I'm going to draw a line where my bed is, and then I'll figure it out later. That's going to kind of place where my doors are internally. So if I do another three foot set of doors so I can get things in and out. And they'll be in line so that I can just walk straight back. Okay. These might end up being sliding doors so they don't take up as much room or I don't know yet. Uh, I, I may not even put doors in right away. Maybe I will later, that kind of thing. So that's boogered up, let's fix that. The good thing about whiteboards is they're easier to, to erase. The bad thing is they're easy to erase. End up knocking things off. And this thing is partially erased because it would get bumped into a lot. Okay, now obviously my bed doesn't need to be 16 feet long. What I was looking at though, one of these drawings had a kitchen nook somewhere. So one, the other idea was, okay, so kitchen nook. Um, easy chair. could have a coat rack up here and just kind of make a corner that I could have a chair I could sit I most of my apartments have not had a couch or a dining room table if I have a table it ends up never getting used 
um, I typically would sit at the computer. Okay. Now, what I'm looking at right now as soon as the house is built, I want to come over and start the bus renovation. Okay, which means everything that's in the bus will come out again. But not all at the same time, so in sections, right? Um, one hand on the fly sweater, keep getting buzzed. The other thing though is if I can set it up that I can do most of what I need to do in the house, the house should be a lot more temperature comfortable, it'll be less dusty, it'll be cooler in the summer, it'll be warmer in the winter because it's made out of wood instead of steel, it'll have insulation, you know, it's got a lot of advantages there. Um, and I'll have more room, okay, that's huge, an extra four feet of width will make a huge difference in day to day life. And then it's a matter of time and money. If I end up having to get to work right away because I've spent all my money, then I won't be doing the bus conversion right away. That's kind of the point. So, <clears throat> I guess, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm i really struggling with this because right now I want to get out and start working, but I don't have a plan. And this, this is the kind of thing that bites me in the ass constantly stop and make a plan before you start working you know this i should this i had two weeks i could have been doing i had three months i could have been doing i've been looking at this thing for how long and i'm like yeah hey, i'm just going to build a house and i'm like wait a minute <laughs> you know where what you know where and what kind of thing so let's just you know i'm going to start off with arbitrary and then i can change it if i need to so if i have a, um, a space for a chair let's let's give myself four feet okay so we'll just give ourselves kind of a reading nook over here the bed is I figured it's a little more than six feet so we'll just give ourselves something like that and then this gives me I can have a, a closet and dresser would be nice you know I don't need very much room for that but that's something to put there okay on the kitchen side I could give myself a nice six foot, that seems huge, doesn't it? I don't need a six foot. Four feet would be plenty. So let's say if we do ourselves a four foot, okay, I'm gonna do this and then come out two feet. Don't do metric. Let's do another two foot right here. All right. lines up before I forget what they are. So what I'm thinking, because this um, east is this way, I'm used to sitting and looking out the window in the morning with my cup of coffee and my breakfast and my laptop. Okay, so I haven't firmly placed this door. I can move it a little bit, but this is a 24 inch. Counter. 
So this becomes four feet. So it's kind of an L-shaped four foot by four foot countertop. Okay. And the way I'm set up right now, it's actually really similar to that. So I'm used to that amount of space. Now it's, it seems crowded now, but that's because everything else is jammed into that. Okay. It, what I like about this is I've got the kitchen counter at the same level and right there. Okay. Now I may adjust the, the height of this countertop. You know, I'll, I'll adjust this to where it's comfortable. Um, cause like for instance, where I'm sitting and I'm on, I'm on my office chair, which I haven't been on for quite a while. The countertop that I'm using for drawing is 32 inches. That's too high for typing. And I think I did the same. Uh, the kitchen countertop that I'm using is about 30 inches. So I, I, I'll adjust that later, right? So I'll just, I'll sit, I'll actually sit there with a the chair and figure out how high I want it and make myself custom height. Okay, that's easy. But if I, you know, so seating here, I've got, you know, I can have a laptop and a laptop or, you know, sub, sub shelves, raised shelves, countertops, whatever. Okay. And some window so that I can see out. And I might have a window here and a window here. Okay, so I can look out both ways because I'm used to having, you know, 360 degree windows in the bus, except I've covered up most of them now. So I probably won't do as big of a window, but I'll have something. Okay. And then the easy chair area. This is something I, I learned well from reading what other authors and artists are doing. Have one place that you write and a different place that you edit. And it seems kind of strange, but just sitting down in a different chair in a different corner of the house and reading what you wrote, also at a different time of day. Um, figure out, you know, figure out what works best for you. But if you if you have, you know, maybe you write for two hours in the evening and then the next morning your subconscious has had all night to process it and you read it again the next morning and you decide if you like it or not and then you whip out the red pen and you mark it all up and then you, you know maybe the next day you go back and read another section of it kind of thing so you kind of split it up that way but by seating it in a different chair you'll look at it in a different way and actually it is a different light you know because you got a different lamp over there you know so it just changes how you look at things all right so that's that. Um, the other thing I liked about this, when I first drew it, I was like, oh, okay. I could be sitting here, because this is my biggest problem right now. I'll end up with five or six different drinks and snacks and stuff sitting on my desk when I'm trying to work, and it gets very cluttered. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll run out of coffee and I'll go back and I'll grab a Gatorade and I'll sit down and I'll sit next to my coffee cup and then I'll eventually grab a bottle of water and that'll sit next to the coffee cup and the Gatorade and it gets like okay I got too much damn stuff here okay well I can just rotate my chair and put all of this crap on the kitchen counter and then the sink will be somewhere in here okay so what I'm thinking coffee maker will be right here I can reach it without even getting up now that doesn't sound like much but that's freaking awesome. That's the dream, <laughs> you know. So thinking about that, now I've got 12 feet width. That's not huge, but I could do a, an island in the middle. So I'm just going to write kitchen island. And the design I like the best about this If I pick up some casters, then I can roll that thing out of the way when I'm not using it. I mean, I do not cook if I can help it. Okay. But, and I'm not sure if I'm even going to use it, but it was just kind of an idea because I've got a lot of room out in the middle. What 
what am I going to do with it? You know, how how should I best use it? Not like, oh my God, what am I going to do with all this space? But um, see, looking at it in the proper dimensions, this looks freaking huge. You know, I, I kept thinking it was crowded when I was looking at this because this was wrong. This should have been this big, right? But because I drew, I drew the shape and then I changed the dimensions, I never went back and did this. I may decide that I don't need 16 feet for the actual house, right? So what am I missing, you know? I could give, you know, I could, you know, kind of slide this imaginary line and give myself more here. That would be easy. So maybe I'll give myself, because I need room for the printer. So that's what's one thing that would be useful to have. So let's just, um, let's give myself eight feet and then I'll have room for the printers. So let's chew some of that space up. Or at least six feet, because that, that was four. So I'm going to do that to six. There. The kitchen counter that I'm using now, I've got a little propane stove and two microwaves, and I think it's six feet long. Let me look. Yeah, it's a six foot counter. Now I don't have a sink and I don't need two microwaves. Also, the coffee maker is on there, but it, it could be on a shelf above. But if I made an eight foot countertop, that would probably be all that I would need. Okay. I'm thinking more linear, but I can also do shelves. So if I do an eight foot countertop, okay, and that leaves me two feet. This is good. Okay. Six feet for the kitchen nook and office. And what I'm thinking, if I just have an area that I can kind of put my chair and eat or, you know, whatever, that's good enough. It'll be more office space. However, looking forward, when I get the bus conversion done, I'll, I'm going to move the office back to the bus because I love sitting in front of the windshield. I just, that's just awesome. Okay. So, let me do this. a lot better. Then you wait a second and you erase it with your finger and you're done. So another two foot deep shelf. Okay. When I'm not using the island it'll probably get pushed back here. Um, was that eight feet from here to there? Yeah, this is an eight footer. Okay, so that's 10, okay, that's a full 16 feet. Okay, so I've used up to 16 feet. Uh, bed, um, and my closet slash dresser is about six feet. Yeah, it's taking shape. So one of the things, because I've got two printers and a flatbed scanner and a filing cabinet. Okay. So, and I've also got eight foot ceilings, which I don't have here on the bus. So I may make kind of like a tower here that's got two printers, one on top of the other and a spot that I can use the scanner and then push it back underneath the printer, that kind of a thing. Um, when I'm getting into drawing mode and writing mode, it's 
really handy to be able to print out a section and then sit, you know, take take a, a stack of paper over here to the easy chair on a clipboard and read it and mark it up. I just that seems to work really well for me. You know, so I'd, I'd print it out, I'd staple, you know, one staple on the corner, read it, mark it up. The next day when I go back to writing, I could look at it and make changes. Because when I mark it up, I can see what was originally there. If I do it on the computer, I find myself getting into a loop, you know, where I make a change and then I unchange it and then I make a change and then I unchange it kind of thing. So, because I, I remember making the change, but then I don't remember what, what it said originally. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good starting point for the front half. I'm going to transfer my door from the interior door all the way back. I'm not sure if the front door is going to be... Right now, the front door is centered. Okay. So one of the things that I'm looking at... I want some shelf space, but it's mostly going to be work counter space in in the tinker shop. So I'm just going to draw a two foot perimeter workbench all the way around, and then I'll erase parts of it later. But open space against the wall doesn't do me any good, and I need massive space for stuff. That's kind of what I'm looking at. And then obviously I need to remove part of that for where the door comes through. Two feet. Now the, part of the idea here oh yeah, you're not even this, are you? for the shop, tinker shop, I'm doing two foot deep benches all the way around on both sides. Now I can have another island in the middle. And for the amount of room I've got, because two feet, two feet, that's four feet, so I got eight feet of space in between here. So if I made a four foot by four foot island, or maybe even longer, maybe four foot by, can I do eight feet? I can't do eight feet, but I can do a six foot island, which would give me a foot to walk around, which is pretty tight. Um, I loved an idea that they did on Mythbusters between Jamie and Adam. I don't know who'd come up with the design, but they made tables. They welded them so they're uh, steel, and they were just slightly offset. So one was like two inches taller than the other, but they made a bunch of them. So when they were doing something that needed table space, they drag these things out in the middle of the floor and use them. And when they didn't need them, the, the top one overlapped the bottom one. So it was like two inches narrower and two inches shorter. So they could nest them. So that you, you get the tall one up against the wall and then you grab the shorter one and push it right underneath the tall one. Boom, you're done, right? So I'm gonna say this is, um, I guess it kind of depends what am I building in here. I'm not building anything huge. So that's something to keep in mind. I don't need as much storage space in here because I've got this storage. This is one of the things I'm looking at. Um, this, I could make two. I could put fold up sides on it. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this thing out and this is what I love about having a whiteboard where you can get to it. Is I'll look at this for a few days and come back and make a change. Right, so this door also opens inward. I'm, I wasn't planning originally to have any windows on the south side, which seems stupid, because that's where you get your winter sun. The problem is, the bus is right here, right? And the bus will block most of my south sun, but I'll still get reflected light in. So one of the things I'm looking at now, I've been taking out bus windows, and I don't like the bus windows per se because the dust blows through them, the wind blows through them, they're awful. But I can take the glass panels out of the bus windows 
and put them into a new frame. So a little bit of time on the table saw, I should be able to make a wood frame that holds half of the bus window. And it wouldn't be able to open, but it would let the light in. So I may put some of those down this wall, just to give myself some south facing light, even though I don't, don't get very much um, visibility. And that clip is done. Next important thing I gotta be thinking of. Okay, I just measured around my shower and I think a 30 inch shower is plenty. All right, this line is set at 40 inches. So if I draw a 36 inch line for my shower, I just want to kind of get an idea where that is, or 36 I should say. Now anything in the storage area, that's gonna be wrong. Whoever came up with the idea to make a transparent triangle is a genius. Okay, so I'm going to write this as three feet square. There we go. Now I got a shower. The idea I came up with, I really wanted to put a deep sink out here because, you know, when I was in the Navy, we had deep sinks to wash out your mop buckets and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, well, if I already got the shower there, I could wash out the mop buckets in the shower, right? So I don't need a deep sink. Original plan on this one, it was shower, washer, dryer. But I've been looking at it, and I'm like, well, I've already got the, sh the washer and dryer in the bus, and they work in here. Um, I'm going to move the dryer towards the back of the bus when I get the shower set up in the house. So the washer and dryer will be together in the back half of the bus, and then that's good. Because in the daytime, I'm going to be in the bus working. You know, so that's where I'm going to do all my writing and stuff like that. So it made sense to have the washer and dryer in the bus so that I can kind of keep an eye on that while I'm working instead of going back to the house all the time. So what I envision now, I don't know how far this is going to go, if I don't have time to do the bus conversion, I'll spend more of my time in the house. But, you know, it's kind of like, once I've got the bed in the house and the office set up in the house, somewhere in here will be the deep freeze. Um, I should figure that out, but it's pretty small. Oh, and, and a fridge. Sink it makes sense to push the sink this way, but not too far. So I, I haven't really laid this out, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this, is for plumbing, if I was smart, I'd be able to find all my color markers. So I'm gonna need plumbing somewhere over here, and my drain, I've got a drain from the bus that comes across the house underneath already. So if I can tie into it, it's over here somewhere. So that's real easy from the shower. And what I'm thinking is if I can just hook these together, so I got my drain there. And I really wanted to figure that out before I put the floor in. That makes things just a whole lot easier because I do not want to crawl underneath here if I can help it, right? And you need to get the the drain to where it'll flow. So assuming the floor, you know, itself is pretty level, but the floor is kind of close to the ground, so I want to make sure that I have enough room to get the drain to where I want it to go. I guess is the point. Now, on the plus side, this is an outside wall, and this is an outside wall, so I can reach from the outside in to do this, accepting that it goes all the way across. Pulling the pecs is pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna probably, I'll, I'll be putting pipe insulation on the pecs and then pulling it. I think I'll follow a, a joist and then come across because you don't want to leave it hanging. So I'll get some P clips or whatever to attach it to a, one of the joists. So, and service comes in from the back corner. So plumbing will come in. Let's see, if I do, that's, that's my drain. Uh, I'll do red for, for plumbing, so it's red and blue, but I'll just do that. So if I pull in like this, something like that, and then I'll just do blue next to it so I can remember. This 
X is pretty cheap. Hot and cold, and then the drain. Drain doesn't have to go follow the walls. I was looking at running PEX through the walls, but it doesn't make sense to go through a door. That's interesting, huh? So this is 20 feet approximately, and then 12 feet, and where, wherever the sink ends up. Now the nice thing is, is if I come up anywhere in here, come up elbow over to where the sink actually is, that's good enough. Um, but that's it for the plumbing, right? I need a shower and I need, and I need a sink. I'm, I'm, what I'm looking at is I'm going to put a faucet in the sink separate for, or in the shower separate from the shower itself. So I'll have one, one set of taps or whatever for the shower and then down closer to the ground to the floor I'll have a, a utility sink faucet it'll just be there and I'm going to use that for washing my hands you know so uh, the composting toilet will be back in here somewhere so that's it for that uh, electrics I'm thinking double plug-ins every four feet which isn't that much really you know so if I do I'm going to just mark a couple of them so I can see it's so every four feet so at four feet at eight feet okay and I don't need one in the corner I'll probably put one on the outside wall. I don't need plug-ins in storage, but I'll put one in anyway. Because this is just going to be shelves, because I've got a shitload of stuff on, you know, in totes and stuff like that. I'll have supplies that I can use from in here, because it's only a few feet. So I just, this will be storage. I'll have a couple lights, and that's about it. I know that if I don't put a plug-in, I'll end up dragging cords in there, kind of thing. What I might do, because this makes sense, if I do a plug-in here on both sides, and then at two feet have a plug-in there. Because I could also do an assembly table in here, so maybe another, because like, okay, for instance, when I got a bunch of totes, you grab a tote and you want to set it on something so you can dig around in it, take what you need, put it back again. So I'm going to put a little table in here. You've got eight feet. So if I did a little four foot table, and then we get to the kitchen, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do come out here four feet, and I think one here at two feet. Because odds are I'm gonna need something in this area. So instead of because you don't want to pull a cord across the doorway. Okay, that's a big no no. Um so four feet. 8 feet, 12 feet, and then a shitload of plugins for the computers, so something like that, and maybe an extra one over here. And then I need something over here, something by the bed. Now here's the thing, um, I'm going to do one there, one there, I don't need any plugins in the bed kind of makes sense to do something there. Maybe we'll have one there, because I'll have... I like my bed now is elevated, so I've got room underneath the bed. Oh, also plug-ins, I'm going to do, the plug-in is going to be four feet off the ground, so you don't got to reach down for it. Now, I've got power strips that I can use in the in the, in the the shop. You know, it's, it's like a f three or four foot long thing with plug-ins every couple inches kind of thing. They're pretty awesome, but I still wanted to do double plug-ins. Now, the other thing is, okay, so let's just do this. Kitchen, I'll get my electrical plan here. Two, three, four, it's like five things. <laughs> I don't have a lot of stuff. I also gotta be thinking 12 volt stuff. I need a new, new color. 12 volt. Again, we'll do that through the walls, but I also gonna have 12 volt lighting. What 
what I'm seeing from just writing where I want them to be. If I just do a main feed, left feed and right feed kind of thing. From one end to the other. So the thought here, if I run the wires in the ceiling for the 12 volt lighting, so I just run a, a red and a black. I've been using trailer junction boxes and I like the idea. I'm gonna play with that a little bit because you know I, I know I'm gonna want a strip of lights over the kitchen cabinets or under over the kitchen counter. Uh, most of the 12 volt lighting I got is too bright actually it, you know one it uses more power than it needs and two you really don't need that much light they're very bright and very efficient so I can run dimmers so what I've been doing in here kind of for prototyping I'll set up a dimmer where I can reach it and have each light on its own dimmer circuit and switch okay but the way I wired the bus for temporary I've got a single 12 volt feed well positive and negative from front to front to the back of the bus and then I set up trailer junction boxes that that 12 volt feed taps into and then from that 12 volt feed I can pull lighting circuits off of so I could have for instance in the office I'd have a couple of light switches for task lighting and also the 12 volt uh, dimmer for that light. And then a dimmer for here, I could have a dimmer on my bit, little bed lamp, um, a light in the closet, that kind of thing. A couple lights in storage. I don't need a lot of light in storage because it's actually gonna be closer to this. With um, These are probably not gonna be full two foot shelves. I was thinking 16 inch shelves all the way around and then something in the middle. That might be the table in the middle. Because if I do four or two foot shelves in eight feet, two foot, two foot, that's four, it leaves me four feet down the middle. You don't want it to be too crowded, but it, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in there. It's like, you know, I need density so I can get lots of stuff in there. And is really, you know, from the last few years, I've been buying crap load of stuff for uh, tools, electronics parts for the robot project. Uh, now I've got radio controlled airplane parts also for the robot project and also an airplane probably. Um, so like LEDs, servos, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis now, uh, and then computer stuff. Shitload of like hard drives. Okay, that doesn't have to sit in the office because those are just sitting there. You know, they aren't, I don't spin them up very much, so I could have a stack of drives in storage, go back and grab them when I need them. Not a big deal, you know, that kind of thing. Um, when I get to the shop, I don't need to light every corner. You know, when I'm, when I'm working in the shop, I guess a little bit will depend what am I actually doing. Uh, one example is I may set up the 3D printer in storage because it's kind of noisy. You know, it makes that annoying servo sound constantly. And that just grates your nerves after a while. So I may put the 3D printer in storage and then I can close the door so I don't hear it. Also, it, it uh, releases um, not necessarily toxic, but kind of obnoxious smelling plastic melting smells. So it would be nice to have that vented. And since I'm already going to have a vent for the toilet and I'll probably have a vent for the shower, maybe I just put the 3D printer near there and have an open window that can vent out. Something like that. That would be nice, you know. Um, but anyway, if I, you know, I'm drawing this up as, you know, light, 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 light in each corner. I don't know that I'm going to do track lighting, but 
I would like to be able to have some flexibility that I can reach up and move a light. That's the one thing I really like about the school bus. I've got uh, the metal ceiling and so a lot of my lights are magnetic. I can just stick a light to the ceiling and it's wonderful. I can just move it wherever I want. Okay. Now I'm not going to do a metal ceiling in the house, as tempting as that is. I may look into putting up strips of metal, you know, a six inch wide piece of metal, um, 12 gauge, 14 gauge thick, something like that, that I could attach to the ceiling. Then I could stick things to it just because I'm so used to it now. And it was really handy. So, because I'm living off grid, I'm not, I don't have unlimited power yet. Being able to put one or two temporary work lights on the ceiling where you need them is really pretty useful. Um, all of my lighting is going to be 12 volt lighting, I think, just because it's easier. I mean, it's not necessarily cheaper, but I've got a lot of it already. Plus, I can use um, magnetic work lights that are have their own batteries in them that I can then you know charge during the day. And I'm just, I'm just used to that. I mean, my whole time in the Navy, I always had a flashlight with me so you could, you know, see where you're going in the dark kind of thing. It's just kind of, you get used to it. Um, so if I have near each doorway a couple flashlights or magnetic work lights or just, you know, portable work lights. Um, nothing they can reach right now. Yeah, there's... So I've got a pretty good collection of these things. So I've got a whole bunch of these that are magnetic. And then I picked up two of these, which are wonderful. In the shop, definitely. And I'm using them in the kitchen right now because, you know, I don't care if it's a work light or a kitchen light. Um, these are about $16 at Walmart. And these were about two bucks a piece, I think. And double A batteries. This has got a built-in rechargeable battery pack, USB recharge. Pretty cool. And that's another thing I'm looking at. Off of this 12 volt bus, if I put something like a trailer box, a junction box that I can get to, I'm likely to be you know, I don't want to have wires buried in the wall that you can't get to. You know, I'm, I'm always going to be adding something to it, is the way I'm looking at it. Um, so I want to have accessible access points to the wiring, right? If I have a 12 volt feed up here, I can plug in a 5 volt, or a 12 volt to 5 volt adapter and then pull USB type power off. So like those lights that are USB recharged, I could have where the light normally sits have a USB cord close to it that I could just plug it in and still use the light, that kind of a thing. Um, yeah. This feels awesome seeing this because that was a complete train wreck. That, that was always throwing me off because it just seemed so wrong, because it was wrong. This was useless. This one, also useless. You know, didn't do me any good. So it's like, now that I've got this, I'm going to erase these and then I can reuse them for something else. Now the irony of this, really, I knew this was the footprint. So the fact that, you know, all my drawings are wrong didn't really matter. I've already got the foundation in the ground to build this. I'm ready to go out there and start building. And I didn't have a proper working drawing. It was like, how freaking backwards is that, right? That's just kind of the way I end up doing things because I'm making it up as I go. Eventually, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot and realize I just really jacked something up. You know, that's just inevitable. Um, I'm pretty close to the point now where 
I think by the end of this week I'll have walls standing up, which means I need to be framing doors. And so I really got to know where the doors are best to put, you know. I had been in my mind thinking the interior walls didn't really matter so much as far as, you know, where they go exactly, because I could, I could shift them. And I, this is what I was looking at is, do I need all of this room for my kitchen? Not really. And also, I don't really have a living room, but I've got the easy chair and I've got the office. That's kind of my living room. Um, I may shift the bed down. Now, the bed isn't inbuilt, inbuilt you know, so that's flexible, which is nice. My closet and dresser, I don't own a dresser right now. Um, would be nice. So I'm thinking, you know, I could have a, a hanging rack to put my shirts on, would be nice. Um, a lot of my stuff ends up in duffel bags or whatever. Uh, I want to build just even some basic shelves that I can fold up my clothes and put them on the shelf would be nice. That kind of a thing. The bed, captain's bed, I'm going to write that on there. What I've been doing until now, all my socks and underwear goes, when it's clean and folded, goes back into hampers and those are just pushed under the bed. Okay. I've always liked the idea of the captain's bed with the drawers underneath. And then in winter time, I put the bubble wrap over the top of the bed to make an insulated kind of cocoon that I sleep in. So I'm gonna make that a little bit nicer, but I like the, the idea of the bed being somewhat enclosed for winter time, it keeps it warm and I'm kind of used to it. So I've, I've left it open, but it's still on the bed right now. So if I make a slightly nicer version of that, the bed would still be movable, but it's getting heavier when you start adding the shelves and the, the drawers underneath it. So it's less movable, unless I make just boxes on skateboard wheels that you roll out and push back in, that may happen. But what I'm thinking is if, if my headboard has a TV on it, or maybe that's the footboard now, one of the things I don't have is a place to watch a movie. I'll end up sitting in the chair on the laptop watching a movie. I own three 24 inch monitors, smart TVs. Uh, I bought them originally for spaceship sets, uh, ended up liking them. They were relatively inexpensive. Uh, now I can get a 40 inch 4K TV for like 200 bucks or something ridiculous like that. So one idea the easy chair would be great, you know, because it'll be like a recliner or something like that. So I could put a TV close to it, right? Well, even if I just had the 24 inch monitor, that's pretty nice to sit and watch. You know, I can, that'll be completely fine. Also, I got to be thinking, I don't have unlimited power, and so the bigger the screen, the more power it pulls. Now, they're getting pretty good, but it still, it still uses some power, right? If I watch too many movies at night, I don't have enough power to make coffee the next day. It's kind of the, the, the great equalizer. Um, but if I shift this a little bit, I like the idea of the easy chair being um, in a corner, so if I have a window facing out, obviously, you know, I can sit there and just stare out the window and drink my coffee in an easy chair if I decide to, instead of, you know, get a break from sitting here next to the computer all the time, that kind of a thing. Uh, if I give myself a little bit more room here and take some room away from here, that's okay. I don't need as much room for the dresser because it's all going to be under the bed. Okay, so more space here. Less here, and this goes into the captain's bed. Okay, so I could have two feet of um, clothes, like a, one of those dowels for hanging your clothes on. You know, that would be fine. And we're done. I've also thought I could push some of this into here because that's where the washer and dryer were going to be. Okay, so I could put all my hanging shirts out here or something, you know, so that's easy. Give myself a little more room here because if I had, what I'm thinking, 
this would be pretty slick. I could have a screen. I've seen this before where you're laying in bed and a big monster screen retracts from under the bed to where you can see it kind of thing. Now I wouldn't go quite that way but what I was thinking well, two ways from bed if my head is here and if I had a screen at the foot of the bed and if I kind of sit up a little bit I could watch a movie while I'm you know in bed that TV could be on a, uh, on a stand that could rotate around and I could see it from the chair also all right something like that um, and I give it like 180 degrees of rotation and we'd be set you know if it was mounted to the wall and it could pivot one way or the other that would be really what I need um, the other option is the computers is where most of the video files are so sometimes it would be nice like for instance when I'm logging I'm just sitting here watching all the videos that I've shot and I'm typing notes as I'm going now I can do that on my Chromebook. So I could be sitting there in the easy chair and have a fold out table and I could just be sitting there, you know, watching the videos, typing the notes, and that would be pretty slick. Or I could have the video on a bigger screen and type the notes on the Chromebook. You know, so they're separate. That would work. So I'll kind of work that idea through. The other thing I haven't done in here is this drawing table, but I think the drawing table is going to end up back in the bus, you know, because it's here already. Not that that's a big deal, but um, I want to be able to work in the bus and go to the house to relax a little bit. And I've already said that the office, once the bus is converted, is going to come back to the bus. And then I'll just have a kitchen nook. I'll probably still have a laptop in the house regardless. You know, so that could be, you know, I could take the, you know, this would be one of the things too is if I take the Chromebook in the house and do my writing there and I come here for doing video, that kind of a thing, kind of divide the tasks and I've got enough computers I could easily do that. All right, that's about it for this week. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. And uh, what else is there? Patreon and PayPal and all that other stuff. Check out the, uh, the link in the description. I've got a page on my website. It gives you a lot more information about the ranch and everything I'm doing out here. So, again, thanks for now, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. More info is on my website. You should totally check that out. Link is in the description. I do things <laughs> differently. <laughs>